Mr. Jeffrey Goyen. But you know, we come from all over the world, but we share similar traits in common. And it's true, I don't care where you're from, we're all the same really, and we all share similar traits. As people, we tend to exaggerate. Now think about it, how many times have you gotten that call from a friend who tells you he was almost killed, but he wasn't even hurt? Yeah. <laughs> he almost killed. He has the nerve to tell you he was almost killed and he wasn't even hurt. And they all have some weird story, but it all ends the same way. And one more inch, and I would have been killed. <laughs> I'm like, listen, if you're gonna tell people you're almost killed, at least have the decency to be severely injured. <laughs> or else it diminishes the severity of the story. Huh? It's like saying, I almost had sex with this chick last night. Really? How far did you get? Well, I called her and she wasn't home. <laughs> but if she had been home, I would have totally nailed her. It's a very romantic expression, used mostly around Valentine's Day. <laughs> and it had to be created by a guy. And you know how I know that? It had to be created by a guy, because only a guy would be lame enough to compare the act of having sex with a woman to hammering a nail into a piece of wood. <laughs> Trust me, you will never hear two women use that expression. You will never hear one girl say to another, how was your date last night? Great. Did he nail you? <laughs> you will never hear that. And if you do hear that, change who you're hanging out with. <laughs> because it's a bad crowd. Very confusing. But a lot of things are confusing to me. And don't you hate it when you wake up in the morning and you're really in the mood to vote and there's no election? <laughs> <laughs> Let me leave you on this. I, uh, a lot of people tend to say that chivalry is dead. And by people, I basically mean women. <laughs> because you'll never hear a guy say that chivalry is dead. What would be the point, right? Now, chivalry was very big in like the 1600s. And it seemed to have something to do with men throwing their coat in the mud for a woman to step on. Like, who came up with that right idea? Dry cleaners? <laughs> How would that even work? What, were coats made of wood in those days? You throw your coat in the mud, it magically turns into a ramp? The ship just glides over the puddle? Seriously, picture this scenario. It's the 1600s. You're walking with this chick. It starts to rain. You come up against the puddle, she starts looking at you. You're like, hey, I just got this coat. It's a brand new coat. So I'm like, yeah, I got a better idea. Why don't I keep the coat and you walk around the freaking puddle? <laughs> you selfish bitch. So, I gotta sacrifice a perfectly good coat to prove to some chick that I'm polite? <laughs> Throwing your coat in the mud doesn't prove you're polite. It means you're a freaking moron that has no respect for his clothing. I mean, seriously. It's like, well, then what if you do throw it in the mud? Then what do you do? Just leave it there? You play it off like you don't care? Oh, that old coat? I got millions of coats. Coats mean nothing to me. Yeah, what if you were dating a few girls and it was a bad winter? <laughs> you supposed to get all those coats for you. What if you're dating a girl and she knows you have a clean coat? You show up at a house one night and your coat's filthy. She's like, you bastard, have you been cheating on me? Because no guy throws his coat in the mud for another guy. Unless you're gay. And nobody was gay in those days. That didn't kick in until recently. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you guys have been wonderful.